In this video, I'd like to talk about the design of virtual cell migrating to virtual port. Now the traditional way in which wireless LANs were designed, what we think of as a legacy de uh, design of wireless LANs, is really based on microcell architecture. Now the way microcell works is the following. You have multiple access points. Each access point has a certain coverage region and it advertises its presence. And the way it advertises its presence is by uh, means of a wireless MAC address or what is known in the trade as BSSID. Okay. This is just an index. It looks like a MAC address. Uh, and what it does is it advertises the presence of this access point. So when a client comes into a network, or in other words, when a client is trying to establish connectivity, it does a probe. It looks to see what are all the BSS IDs or access points that are in the network, and the client sends out a probe request. All the access points that hear this probe request and want to serve the client will send a probe response, and then the client decides which access point to choose. So in this instance, let's assume there is one, uh, first off, there are two access points, call them AP1 and AP2. AP1 advertises for a certain SSID, which is a wireless service, let's say BSSID1. And AP2 has its own unique wireless MAC address, BSSID2. Right? So there's a client that started out here. It comes into the network, it probes, and it says, I need connectivity. Only access point 1 hears it. It responds with BSSID 1, and therefore the client is connected to AP1. As the client moves, it starts to slowly see AP2. And at some point, the client is going to come out here, and its signal strength with respect to BSSID 1 is going to get weaker. And it's going to try to figure out, it has to make its own decision uh, on which other access point to connect to. So at this point, it'll start doing another probe. AP1 and AP2 will hear it. And they will both respond. And it's up to the client to choose BSSID2. So notice a couple of things that are implicit in what I just said. First off, access points only advertise their presence and their willingness to take in clients. It's the client's decision. And secondly, as the client moves, when it decides to hand off, it's the client's choice. Now, uh, there are about, as of today, about 5,000 different options in terms of drivers, chipsets, and settings. Um, and many of these, and in many of these, it's a client decision that is highly variable. So what is the right algorithm, or how does a client decide when to make this trade-off? Nobody knows, because it's a function of the client. And the key point is, you don't want a client-initiated network, because you know, one client can start affecting the behavior of another. So the question here is, how do you take decision away from the client? Well, there is one way of doing it. Let's take both these cells, and let's make them advertise the same BSS ID, or wireless MAC address. Now, whether the client is here, or here, or here, when it seeks the presence of access points, what does it hear? It hears only BSS ID 1. Whether there's a single AP responding to it, or multiple APs responding to it, they all respond with the same wireless MAC address, the same BSS ID. Now notice, you took the decision making transparently away from the client. As the client moves, it is up to the infrastructure to figure out when access point 2 is better served to serve the client than access point 1, and transparently change this association, or transparently change this assignment. From a client perspective, there is no handoff. So how does this happen? Access points are connected through a back-end fabric to a controller. And periodically, access points compose a message digest of all the devices that they see with the corresponding RSSIs, frame rates, you know, num number of transmissions, etc., up to a controller. So the controller basically has a global view. So what it has in terms of its you know, topology view is the following. It sees a bunch of access points it sees a bunch of stations, right? And let's think of this as a graph where you have any link essentially identifying uh, you know, connectivity, right? So you have, these are the access points, this is a set of APs, 
and this is the set of stations. And a link here means an AP can see a station. And the weight of that link essentially tells you the signal strength or the signal quality of that. Uh, not, it's not an association, but it is how the access point and the station see each other. It is the link quality. Now, based on this graph, the controller can decide globally which is the optimal assignment to make. So in fact, what the controller does is it says this station is assigned to this AP, this station to this AP, this station to this AP, etc. Right? Notice that if this link becomes weaker and this link becomes stronger, which is equivalent to a station moving from here to here, the controller can transparently change this assignment. From a client perspective, the BSS ID never changed, but in the infrastructure, these routing tables here of this mapping get moved from here to here, and correspondingly access points know when to acknowledge and forward traffic. So this is the basic idea of what we call virtual cell. All the access points advertise the same BSS ID. Now notice that whether you have one, one client or multiple clients, they all connect to the same BSS ID. Right? So the good news here is that as any one of these clients moves or all of these clients move, they're transparently handed off. But the bad news or the limitation of the system is that you can still only control an aggregate of clients because the contention parameters that are advertised over the air are really per BSS ID, per the 802.11 standard. Therefore, when the access point essentially tries to control channel access using 802.11 parameters that we will be talking about in a companion video, you will notice that it can advertise values for downlink or which it uses and advertise values for uplink. Since all of these devices are connected to the same BSS ID, they all see identical values. How do you differentiate between this client and this client? Well, uh, one way of doing that is by giving them different BSS IDs. So notice that rather than making these BSS IDs a function of the access point or unique to an access point, let's, when a client comes in, let's make sure that we assign a unique BSS ID per client. And let's make sure that as that client moves, the BSS ID basically moves along with it. So one way of thinking about it is, rather than virtualizing a cell, you really personalize an access point. You create a personal access point for each client, and as that access point moves, for, uh, and as that client moves from you know location to location, you figure out which is the best access point to serve it, and then instantiate that BSS ID or that virtual access point on that corresponding physical AP.